Right, I just want to explain something more about pressure volume relationships. So this chart behind me, this should be quite familiar to you by now, you've seen it in various paddy manuals. Um, now instructors usually start off by talking about balloons and how they get smaller on the way down. But as you've seen in the last uh, couple of lessons, they soon move on from balloons to talk about how it affects our breathing rates, uh, the effect of gases in our cylinder, partial pressures uh, and also density. And in our last lesson, we looked at a really simple way that we could work out all of those things. But I think that this chart could be explained. Uh, it could be explained in an in a easier way to people. So I want to spend a little bit of time explaining something that's really simple. And when you see it, it's really obvious, but it's often missed by some paddy instructors. Um, and I really want you to get this. And I'll tell you why, because when it's your turn to teach your future students, I want you to be able to explain this in a really simple way and ex explain exactly what's going on um, with pressures and volumes. Also understanding this, it's a really easy way for you to answer some of the questions that you're gonna find on some future Paddy exam papers. Now, it was Sir Robert Boyle that came up with this uh, idea. It's known as Boyle's Law. But seeing as Robert Boyle lived from 1621 to 1697, it's not surprising that he didn't say, when you go uh, to 10 meters, you increase, you increase pressure by one atmosphere and volume is halved. He, he wasn't a diver, he didn't say that. He didn't even know that a human could possibly breathe compressed air underwater. So he didn't say any of this. But what he did say, however, was very simple and very logical. He said that if you double the pressure, you halve the volume and vice versa. So it's a true, simple relationship. If you halve the pressure, you double the volume. So it's not that this chart is wrong. It's just that sometimes people miss the point of it. So let's look at it closer and uh, and see if it's always true if we double the pressure we halve the volume. So we'll start at the beginning. If we go from one atmosphere to two atmospheres the volume goes from one to a half. Okay okay that's that's the most obvious example we knew that we've we've heard that so many times before we know it's true that bit is clear. But what about other numbers? What about say, three atmospheres to six atmospheres? four atmospheres to eight atmosphere, five to 10. What about those? Well, let's look at three atmospheres to six atmospheres. We can see here that the volume goes from a third to a sixth. So that is half, it has halved. Okay, it might not be useful to use fractions uh, when we're trying to describe volumes. So instead of fractions, what we could do is give it a value. Well, let's say that we've got a balloon that's at, at, um, at three atmospheres, which of course is 20 meters. Uh, let's say it's got a volume of, of 10 liters. We need to be careful uh, not to confuse depth with pressures. Um, as we saw that on the box method, depth is never important in calculating volume. It's always the, uh, the ambient surrounding pressure that counts. So we got 10 liters at three atmospheres. So what would happen if we took it to six atmospheres, which of course is 50 meters? Well, we've doubled the pressure, three to six, so it should simply halve the volume, five liters. But does it? Is that what happens? Was Sir Robert Boyle right? Did the balloon halve from 10 to five liters when we doubled the pressure? Well, we could prove this, by using the box method. We could take the balloon up from, uh, from three atmospheres to the surface, so that's 10 times three is, is 30, then bring it down again to six atmospheres, so that's 30 divided by six is five. So it works, it did. But Robert Boyle's method is far simpler than using the box method um, if there's a relationship. It also works with other fractions. If you tripled the pressure, the volume reduces by a third. Quadruple the pressure, the volume decreases by um, 
a quarter. So a true relationship between volume and pressure. Now, in a moment, I want to talk to you about uh, capillary depth gauges. What, you might ask? That was a bit unexpected. This is supposed to be um, a theory lesson about physics and you want to start talking about equipment. You want to start talking about depth gauges. Why do you want to do that? Well, actually, that's a good question. Um, and I will get round to answering it. I'll answer it in a minute. But for now, do you know what? I've just had a great idea. It's about this pressure volume relationships. It's a great idea. See, I've got a glass and all this talk has given me, well, a, a good idea. You see, in the future, if I was to lose my computer, I won't have a depth gauge. But with your help, I can use my glass. So let's go diving, you and me. We'll dive together. You take your computer, I'll take my glass, I'll hold it upside down uh, so the air doesn't bubble out. We'll stick very close together. You keep a close eye on your computer. And when we get down to 10 meters, what I want you to do is give me a nudge and I'll look to see where the level is here and I'm gonna mark it with a pen, 10 meters. Okay, now, as we've doubled the pressure, the volume should have halved. But then what we'll do is we'll go down to 20 meters. You keep looking at your computer, give me a nudge when we get to 20 meters, we'll have tripled the pressure, so we'll see that the air should have squashed to a third. And I'm just gonna write 20 when we get there, so I'll know where it is. Then we'll go a little bit deeper, we'll go down to 30 meters, four atmospheres, we'll have quadrupled the pressure, so the air would have been up to about here. 30 metres, so I'll put a mark. And then what we'll do is we'll come up and put a safety stop in at five metres. So we'll come up slowly, you give me a nudge when we get to five metres and I'll mark the glass. But I already know roughly where that mark's gonna be because 20 metres is three atmospheres, five metres is half of that, one and a half atmospheres. So according to Boyle's law, it should be halfway between the 20 and the surface, around here somewhere. Woohoo! See, now I've got a depth gauge and it's built according to Robert Boyle's laws with true pressure volume relationships. And whenever I go diving, I can use this as a depth gauge. Okay, you've probably realised this is exactly what a capillary depth gauge is. A capillary depth gauge, of course, isn't a glass, but it's a tube wound around like a circle and the real gauge has got more depths marked on it. But it works like this, precisely on Boyle's Law, pressure volume relationships. And actually that's why people like to use it for altitude diving, uh, just a simple open uh, tube based on physics. Um, regardless of whether you're at sea level or high up in a mountain with, uh, with a lower surrounding pressure, as that pressure around you doubles, the volume will halve allowing to use your dive tables based on the depths that are shown on your gauge. I guess the only downside on a capillary depth gauge is that the shallower depths has a great big gap between them and the deeper that you go, the depths up here, they're all squashed together. But anyway, this is a capillary depth gauge. Now, we can try some questions relating to all of this in the next section. As always, the questions I've popped on there are very similar in content and format to the ones that you're gonna find on PADI exams. So good luck with those, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next video.